Jeff Bezos, the founder and CEO of uh, Amazon, has a word he likes to use very much, the customer obsession. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And I think when you talk about marketing, you're talking slightly perhaps about the fact that AI can help companies recognize exactly what type of uh, r- desires their customers have. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that type of customer obsession is going to be something that a broader number of companies are going to be adapting as the core model? Mm. I, I, I think so. I think it was the same observation when we started looking at uh, digitalization, digital transformation. Uh, uh, I would say that m- much of that was driven by uh, an increased, uh, let's say, between the closeness to customers that you we were able, or companies were able to, to, to um, uh, understand customers and customer behavior in a, in a much more profound way than earlier. And I think it's the same with AI, where maybe AI is taking it another step here. And, but then we have, and, and then maybe we should start talking also about things like trust, privacy, integrity is issues. I think uh, that is something that we also need to, to keep in mind, that th- those issues are, with AI coming up much, much more to surface, uh, which we sort of need to sort of also understand. Um, Another aspect which I think, maybe th- this can sound like a sidetrack, but I, I'm thinking about customer, the, the customer concept. Um, uh, I think, well, one, f- one first idea w- came up in my head when I think about customers that we also citizens. That is, uh, we, we also, I think we shouldn't forget the public sphere that is the public organizations which we are interacting with as citizens. We're not only sort of uh, customers to commercial companies, we're also citizens. So I think there's something that we also need to sort of um, have a sort of have in the back of our head. How can we as citizens be helped by uh, our governmental organizations being equipped more with AI and understanding our behavior in a better way. The second thing that comes up in my head is, uh, and that relates AI to IoT, Internet of Things. Um, And uh, I'm thinking about uh, machines, artifacts becoming customers. That is... With AI, we will also see uh, uh, in the future, and we connect AI to these growing Internet of Things systems where machines are interacting with other machines. Uh, Then, of course, machines uh, will become our customers. That is, if we connect... uh, uh, Let's see, we have a coffee brewer here in the room. If we connect a coffee brewer to AI and uh, let the, the coffee brewer machine... Uh, signal uh, 24-7 how much coffee is left or what kind of parts of the coffee machine that's uh, become getting more and more worn when when it can automatically signal uh, that well now it's time for a spare part Uh, and then uh, this you can say maybe we can see the coffee machine or whether it's a refrigerator or any other type of, of artifact or machine uh, that we are interacting with, uh, with the help of AI, becomes the customer, and we can automatically order a, a new spare part to a, to an e-commerce site. So I think the the interesting thing with AI also that we there's some kind of interesting blurred boundaries between what is a customer here. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there, uh, <laughs> yeah. but if we begin with your first point, uh, there is a lot of what we mentioned is uh, the more back-end type of mm. uh, uses of AI that mm. many of the users might not even be aware of. Mm. And as you raise it, there is a question of ethics there. Mm. How much do you think companies and organizations and governments should mention to the citizen the use of AI mm. in the back mm. end? Yeah, yeah. I think that it's, it's a really good question. I, it's a question pre- pro that needs to be raised all the time. 
uh, and I mean, th I think most of the discussions concern uh, the increased need for transparency. Uh, I think that's that's maybe a general topic that needs to be discussed all the time, and it, it I think it, it's important for all spheres that are using uh, AI in some way, whether it's a public or private area. That is, we need to make these AI, um, uh, let's say, AI algorithms more transparent, uh, which is, of course, a, a challenge. I mean, it's a pedagogical challenge because then it's, it's sometimes very advanced. But I think w still we need to sort of, um, uh, we need to be aware of this. And, and I mean, for example, if, if we're talking about the public sphere and we're talking about medical doctors, if they are going to be able to trust AI as, as part of the maybe front line or back office or sort of functions, they, they probably need to have a basic understanding of what uh, ML, ma machine learning, for example, can do and how it works in order to, to trust the system and, and to, to trust the, uh, the AI uh, solution and system uh, uh, assisting the, the physician in, in some kind of decision making. So I think transparency and, and, and improved, let's say, some kind of pedagogical uh, pedagogical way of explaining AI to all, all users. As I mean, that's part of it. And I think it's a very, very important uh, question. Now, when you say back office use, I mean, I think uh, 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 another thing that I think is, is uh, interesting here, we were talking about market, we started talking about marketing, but that's more market-oriented and sort of use of AI. But there are lots of, of let's say, we go into business organizations, and one thing that I've been thinking about lately and been working with quite a lot is to understand, in, at the other end, procurement function in big organizations, how can they use AI? And then we're touching upon uh, really important issues today which concern sustainability. Because the procurement functions in big organizations, whether they are public or private, they are going to be responsible to a very large extent of dealing with um, companies and organizations' sustainability uh, issues. Uh, understanding how the, the supply systems uh, work and take care of the sort of challenges that we have concerning sustainability. And there, I think, AI... Uh, maybe it could be sort of seen as a as, as back office function, but AI there is going to be incredibly important in the future. That's my prediction for monitoring uh, sustainability in larger uh, systems of suppliers or, and customers maybe also. So I think we have, um, uh, I I if we look upon AI as... as, as as in organizations, as some being more apparent and, and open and in the sort of, let's say, forefront, we have uh, lots of important back office functions. I, I wouldn't call maybe procurement a back office function, but it's, it's becoming more and more uh, important um, as a, for, for, for different reasons. So as to say, when we talk about the sustainability aspect, it's giving companies data about what they are doing themselves that they might not necessarily exactly. have access to. And there are e new EU rules that uh, was launched now in, in, in January. So within two years, it, it's a new sort of EU regulation that uh, companies need to be able to show how they are monitoring um, <coughs> sustainability, different, di different dimensions of sustainability in the whole supply chain. So that's a new rule, so, uh, uh, and that ends up not so much on that sort of internal, uh, you can say, uh, sustainability function, but I in practice it ends up very much uh, uh, on the procurement and supply chain uh, management uh, organization.